Right now on News 4 at 5, terrifying moments in Toronto as the gunman opens fire on innocent bystanders. We're hearing from witnesses who describe the chaos. Keeping very close eye on the rainfall potential, including some really saturating rain coming up. Plus, off-duty officers shooting. We have an update from Buffalo Police on the victim's conditions and who is being charged in this case. News 4 at 5 starts right now. And we will have those stories in just a few minutes, but first we begin with breaking news at 5. Buffalo police say they are responding to a rescue call for a two-year-old girl at Glenwood Avenue in the city. Police say that toddler has been rushed to Oshai Children's Hospital. News 4's Rachel Monjovi joins us live from the scene now with this breaking news. Rachel? Yeah, Don and Jackie, Buffalo police are still on the scene here on 83 Glenwood Avenue. Now, this is a residential neighborhood, but this particular home is actually used as a daycare. A sign in the front lawn calls it Moselle's. Mo Mosey's Ultimate Family Daycare. Police tell us they were called to the daycare for a rescue call. We are told a two-year-old girl has been taken to Oshai Children's Hospital tonight. She is listed in critical condition. It's unclear as to why she was taken to the hospital. We are working to get those details. Now, according to childcarecenter.us, this daycare helps up to 14 children a day, ages six weeks to 12 years old. Now, again, Buffalo police are on the scene here at Glenwood Avenue. Again, we are working to find out what exactly happened to this girl. We do know she is two years old and is in critical condition at Children's Hospital. Stay tuned to News 4 as this story develops. Reporting live, Rachel Monjovi, News 4 at 5. Thank you, Rachel. You can find the latest updates on this story right here on air and by downloading the News 4 app. Our entire city has been shocked by this cowardly act of violence. There's a, a, a rapid fire and, and then maybe a pause and, and some more fire. I saw at least four people shot. It was just a terrible, horrible night here on the Danforth. Tragedy strikes a busy neighborhood in Toronto, leaving two people dead and more than a dozen others injured. The 29-year-old suspected gunman, who has not been identified by police, also died after an exchange of gunfire with police. And tonight, officials say there is no indication at this time that the shooting is terrorism-related, but it also hasn't been ruled out. The mass shooting happened in Toronto's Greektown neighborhood. Cell phone video shows the moments when the gunman opened fire with a handgun into restaurants and cafes. A 10-year-old girl, 18-year-old woman were both killed. While our city will always be resilient in the face of such attacks, it does not mean such a terrible act committed against our residents is any less painful. This is an attack against innocent families and against our entire city. This is a tragedy, another tragedy uh, in our city this year. This shooting comes just three months after a man plowed a van into a crowd of pedestrians, killing 10 people and injuring 14 others. And tonight we're hearing from those deeply impacted by this latest tragedy. News Force Jen Schott spoke with people in and around the Greektown neighborhood. This is still home. That's the message you'll hear from residents of Toronto's Greektown neighborhood. They say they feel personally targeted after their community became the center of tragedy last night. A 10-year-old girl and an 18-year-old woman are dead after police in Toronto say a 29-year-old man opened fire on restaurants and cafes on Danforth Avenue late Sunday night. The shooter then died after an exchange of gunfire with police. His motive is still unclear. Greektown residents are pulling together, leaving flowers and writing simple messages of love and support, reminding everyone they're Danforth strong. Jeanette Dawson lives just blocks from where the shooting happened. I could have just as easily been on the Danforth at 10 o'clock last night. So I feel like I feel like it's kind of been an assault, not just on the people who were on the Danforth at that moment, but on, on my freedom of movement. I, I, I feel very strongly. Jen Schantz, News 4. 
And we will have much more coverage on this mass shooting coming up on News 4 at 6. There will also be special coverage tonight on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. The victim in this case happened to be an off duty police officer, so we would treat it, you know, the same way as any other, any other case. But obviously, you know, it's one of our own. Well, back here at home, the Buffalo police officer who was shot while off duty over the weekend has now been released from the hospital. A second person injured in that shooting has also been released. Meanwhile, the two suspects in this case face the judge today. News Force Chris Cervatis was there. And in that court appearance, Don, orders of protection were issued for the two victims. 29 year old Christopher Bridget, he is the off duty Buffalo police officer. The other victim is 28 year old Darnell Davis. Now, the man on the right of your screen there is facing assault charges. He is 41-year-old Adrian Lias of Buffalo. 40-year-old Reginald Hoax is facing a weapons charge. Erie County DA John Flynn tells us the two suspects were pulled over after the victims were able to get a description of their vehicle. Police say the shooting happened while the victims were sitting in a vehicle outside the Groove Lounge in the early morning hours Sunday. That bar is on Broadway near the Central Terminal. After their first court appearance, both suspects were sent to jail with no bail set. This is how Lias's attorney responded to that. He's a lifelong resident uh, here in Buffalo. He has, he's a family man. He works hard. Um, you know, and uh, uh, bail should have been set in a reasonable amount. We have probable cause uh, to determine uh, at this time that Mr. Lias was the one who pulled the trigger. Prosecutors have told me Lies is facing up to 25 years in prison if convicted. Hoax, meanwhile, who is from North Carolina, is facing up to 15 years if convicted. Flynn could not tell us what connection, if any, they have to Bridget or Davis. This case still under investigation by police. Chris Horvath, it's News 4. Let's turn now to your forewarned forecast. It's been a gloomy day all across western New York, but right now we are hearing rain pour down on the rooftop at the station here in North Buffalo. Here's a live look over downtown Buffalo right now. This follows the rain we saw over the weekend. And we can hear some hitting the roof right now. Tonight, a flash flood watch is in effect for Potter County. Our chief meteorologist, Todd Santos, is tracking all of this and a lot more as more rain is heading our way. Todd? Yeah, you know, we're starting off the week with some localized room for some heavy rainfall. And we're talking, you know, two day totals from today into tomorrow, upwards of two, potentially three inches. Much of that localized down here across Potter and portions of even Allegheny County. Uh, I'm starting here and we'll take a look at the flash flood watch in a moment uh, just because they're basically in line to get overlapped by storms like this one that stretches really from uh, north to south right along the entire Entire county. You get a couple of these to overlap the same area. We call it training rainfall, like these storms running on train tracks, and that's where you end up with uh, some of the really substantial rainfall totals. There's also some lightning down here as well. Um, so that's just the last hour. There's the actual watch itself. Uh, now, again, it's a watch, meaning it's possible. If this is upgraded to a warning at any point, uh, your forewarn uh, app would tell you that if you're locally there, uh, but also that would mean that you really want to take some other steps, especially if you're in low-lying areas or some area that is prone to flooding, especially you know, when you're talking about larger rainfall numbers. Uh, you also want to avoid, obviously, driving through deeper water. To the north, it's more of these kind of here and there rain showers. Now, this one fired up just south of the airport, worked its way across. Uh, now it's on the edge of the 290. Uh, for what it's worth, that is a pretty heavy soaking rainfall. It just ran over our roof. It only lasts at about seven, eight minutes. Uh, but for nights like this where we have the slow roll, it's something to keep in mind. These are not producing lightning. It's not out of the question for them to. They're just barely tall enough, between 18 and upwards of 22,000 feet uh, to the top of them. These are a bit taller. So that's uh, at least where a lot of the lightning has been found. So I do think we'll see quite a bit of dry time this evening. If you're going on the slow roll bottom line, have a raincoat at the very least with you, something packable that you can take with you. Temperatures, you can see where we've been rain cooled and where we're still on the very warm side of things uh, up into Buffalo. So for the slow roll forecast, we'll put in the chances for some showers at least through 7 p.m. Once we hit later on tonight, the chance for rain backs off. So I think your morning commute will be dry, but then tomorrow we get into some other opportunities for soaking rain and in many cases we need it. So we'll talk more about the best chance areas to find the heaviest amounts. I think the ranges over the next couple of days could be between a tenth of an inch to upwards of three inches. And we'll try to help kind of make sense of that wildly large range coming up. Don, Jackie.
Straight ahead in two minutes, speaking out, we're going to hear from the brother of a man charged in the death of a two-year-old boy. And coming up at 5.30, we have new information tonight about a 16-year-old boy stabbed to death in Lockport. We'll tell you what police say may have led up to his death.